Just want to do a quick tutorial on saving video from the NVR. So if you had something happened and you needed to export that video through the computer, you could do it through the web interface. Uh, you can also view a live video in here. So if you're on a computer that's on your network, uh, you can go to that 192.168 address for the NVR. Or if you're coming in remotely and you're not on the network, you can use that public IP address. Uh, just make sure that you put the colon and the HTTP port number at the end of it. Once you're logged in with your credentials, you'll come to a screen like this. We can click live and we can view the live view of the cameras. Um, on the left, you'll have all of the cameras available and you'll have a window here. Uh, you can view multiple cameras in different configurations by just clicking the bottom and it will change that. Um, I'd recommend only viewing four at a time if you're on your local network. Uh, so in the office, you should be able to view multiple at a time, no problem. But when you're doing it remotely, you're going to be limited by how much bandwidth you have for your internet upload speed, which is generally significantly smaller than your download speed. And then, of course, the download speed of wherever you're at. So if I click one, so it's highlighted green, and then I just click whatever camera we want to see. It'll put it in that window, and there we get our playback. Now this is going to be the high resolution or the mainstream playback. If we're doing this from away from the office and we don't want to uh, eat up our bandwidth too much, we can click the little drop-down arrow and change it to the substream 1. That'll just be a lower resolution. You'll notice it's a little grainier of an image, but it's enough to at least see what's going on. Um, when we come to saving video, we'll be saving the, the high resolution image, but this is just good for if you're just doing general monitoring to see what's what's going on around the place. And you can add multiple cameras in here um, just by picking a cell so that it's green. And you'll see it automatically goes to the next one and picking whatever um, camera you want to see and it will put it in that window. Um, if it's a zoom camera, which all of these are, say we wanted to adjust this image right here, we can click on it and then we get our option here to do zoom. So we can use the plus and it will zoom in that camera. Um, just note that if you're not in the office, there's going to be a slight delay. Um, even in the office, there'll be a little bit of a delay. But uh, this is our tutorial on how to save video. So let's say we had something happen that we wanted to see. We'll close out this live view and we'll go into our search options. Uh, it's a fairly similar view, although the cameras are on the right now. We have our main playback window, same green boxes like before to pick where you want to put cameras. And it defaults to the first four cameras selected uh, and to today's date. So you can click back any date that has a little dot on it. It means there's video for that date. Um, you'll see that the first four cameras are selected, which then appear in this timeline along the bottom. So we have midnight to midnight, so a full day's worth of video. Green is general recording, so that's the 24-hour recording. So you'll see that this is all highlighted up until right now. Obviously, there's no future recordings yet. And the only other thing you're going to see are the yellow, which are the motion alerts. So you can see the yellow boxes or highlighting for each channel, showing that there's motion during that. Now, let's say that I had a specific thing that I wanted to save or see. Um, we get our four of you but I want to just see what's going on on one specific spot. I'm going to scroll down and I want to see the rear garage because I want to see someone that comes in and out of there. So now we just have the one camera view. Obviously it's kind of hard to see these recordings. We can come down to the zoom and we can zoom in on the timeline. I'm going to zoom all the way in and we'll get five minute chunks. And then we can click this little dragger and so we can slide it along until we get into the time period where we have some motion. Um, so right here we have some in between 930 and 935. Hovering over the timeline will tell you exactly where you are. So if I want to see what this is, I'll just click just before it and let it load and it's going to play that event. So here we have uh, our motion. Looks like we have somebody leaving the shop. You're going to notice that this video might be a little glitchy. Uh, that's just because I'm doing it over the internet. If we're in the office locally, we shouldn't get that glitchiness because we're going to be 
uh, not limited by our internet service provider speeds. So there's a little chunk. Let's say we wanted to save that video of that uh, gentleman exiting the shop. What I'm going to do is I'm going to hit this scissors icon and that's going to bring us into a selection option. I'm going to just pause the video and you'll see that there's these arrows on either end of the timeline. We can click and drag those. So this is our start time and this is our end time. And you'll see that as I change that and we select, it changes our time range that's selected here. If you knew the specific time that you wanted to start recording, so let's say I wanted to start recording at 53, which is just before he exits, we can manually double click a time and we can change it to whatever we want it to be. And we're good. Once we have our time range selected, either through dragging or entering the time, we'll just hit the save icon. It'll ask us where we want to save. Uh, I'm going to save into the downloads folder and we're going to put it into this recordings folder. And it's going to start a download. It'll show you the speed that it's working at and the percentage. We're just going to let this run. I purposely picked a very short length of video just to speed up the the download process. If you have say an hour's video you're saving, it's going to take a little bit of time, especially if you're doing it over the internet. I would strongly encourage that if you're saving videos of an incident that you do it while you're on the local network so you're at the office. Ideally uh, over an Ethernet connection, not over Wi-Fi. Just that'll give you the best uh, speed as far as saving goes. While it's working, I'll show you another view we have here. There's this little hamburger menu on the right. If we click that, that's going to show us um, all of the recording events for the day. You'll notice that since we're recording 24 hours, it records in one hour chunks. So we have midnight, one, two, three, etc. And then it's also going to do, uh, it's going to break that one hour up if there's motion events. So now we have a, a short motion event at 930. And then once the motion was done, it started recording again. So this is a faster way if we wanted to view uh, an event, we can double click this 932 event and it would take us right to that recording. It's doing a download right now, so I'm not gonna click that, but if you double click it, it will take you specifically to that time period. It also allows you if, um, if we uncheck our general and we have just our motion checked, it's gonna show us all the motion events uh, for this time range in there. So it's a quick and easy way to just go through when things happen. Be aware that, um, see if it'll let me play while it's downloading it will. Just be aware that the motion has been set up and drawn. So I excluded like the backwoods here just because in the summer when you get the wind and the trees blowing, you don't want that giving you false triggers. And obviously someone up close like this, that's a very large area that the camera can detect. Whereas if they're way back here and they're tiny, they're probably not going to get picked up on motion. So if you wanted to get this camera angle from something back there, you're probably going to have to go through the general recordings and just manually review it. Um, that's why we have multiple cameras throughout, though, because we want the cameras on that corner of the building to focus on what's way back there. Obviously, from this distance, we're not going to get any type of an identification or anything really useful from back that far away. So our download's still working. Uh, it's taken a while just because I've saturated my network today with recordings and other things going on. So there we go. Our download is complete. So if we go to this uh, folder, you'll see that I have two. I did one earlier. Uh, the one that we saved is 932.53. So if we look at the time on here, this is the start time. There's our 932.53 and then the end time. If we just double click this, it's going to open up the smart player. In order to play these files, we need this smart player application in the same folder as our video file. So when we double click that video file, it opens up the smart player and it starts playing for us. We can double click this and bring it full screen. Um, what this player allows us to do is if I had multiple files uh, covering different cameras, it would let me see all of those cameras along here and I could play them all at the same time if they're in the same time frame. So it kind of makes a, a recreation of your DVR, if you will, and allows watching multiple cameras. 
and we can play and we can pause them. Um, if we had multiples, we could check and uncheck what we're watching. But that's how that works. Um, double clicking will play the file you're interested in. Um, and that's how we save our video file. So now if we had to share this file, uh, we would sh we would select and we would put these files on a thumb drive. Um, you're probably going to want to do them through a thumb drive. Uh, emailing them could work if they're small enough, but a lot of email filters might filter out and consider it spam just because it's a it's an application you're sharing. Another option would be to do something like Google Drive or Dropbox where you could put these files in there and give someone else access. Or you could always burn them to a CD. <clears throat> kind of depends on who you're giving the video to and what format they want it in.